Hi guys, welcome to Carbohydrates. In this video, we will be looking at the uh, polysaccharides, okay, and the uh, uh, tests for the uh, starch. So we will start with starch. So starch is a polysaccharide. It's a polymer, and it's made of chains of alpha glucose. It's really re uh, important you remember that. And they are of course linked by glycosidic bonds formed by condensation reaction. Where can you find them? Uh, you can find them in uh, plants in uh, the form of small grains. And chains could be branched or unbranched. So they would, uh, uh, they want into a tight coil that makes the molecule very compact. Okay, so it's a really important characteristic that we will be looking at later on. It's compact. And what you need to remember, it's not going to be found in animal cells. So in terms of the start, uh, you need to be able to look at the relationship of it and its structure. So, so what man is with us? Because you need to get used to the word so. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So starch is insoluble because obviously it's large. So if it's insoluble, what does that actually mean? So it does not affect water potential. That's a key word. So water is not shown into cells or out of the cells by osmosis. Another key word. It's large and insoluble. Another characteristic. What does that actually mean? So the starch uh, does not diffuse out of the cells, so it's a really important thing. It's compact, okay, so a lot of it can be stored in small place, and when it's hydrolyzed, it will form alpha glucose, which could be then easily transported, because we say starch cannot be transported out of the cell, and could be used for the process of respiration. And also, it's branched, so for many ends, and uh, each of uh, so each of which can be act uh, on by enzyme stimulations, meaning that glucose monomers are released very rapidly. So that's important characteristic. When you're looking at the past paper questions, they're asking, look, describe and explain features of star that make it a good storage molecule. So again, here we will be looking at this pattern with so. So describe is say what you can see, okay? I'm going to draw an eye here. If that is looking like an eye, that's a disaster, but that meant to be an eye. And explain, use your biological knowledge to say why, okay? So what we've got here, what we've seen before, so look, pattern, same answers all the time. So it's insoluble, so doesn't affect water potential, it's branch, coil okay so it makes it compact okay or can fit in small areas it's a polymer of alpha glucose so okay can be used for respiration it's a substrate for respiration it's branch so that means has many ends so they can be uh, used for the fast breakdown for the enzyme actions and it's large so cannot cross the cell membrane so that can be that means cannot leave the cell Right, so what we're going to use to test for starch in our food samples is the iodine solution. Okay, so iodine solution, make sure you just, uh, you say iodine solution, not just iodine, that wouldn't give you any marks. And what we will observe will be the change of color from yellow to blue-black. So how do we do it? We will put a sample in our test tube we will add two drops of the iodine solution, okay, shake it or stir, and the presence of starch would be identified if the change of color will be present, so from yellow to blue-black. Another polysaccharide that you need to be aware of is a glycogen. So glycogen, it's made of alpha glucose, okay, same as uh, the one that we were, or, or same like starch, and it's of course linked by glycosidic bond. Here we will have two types of the bonds, one four and one six. So what does that actually mean? Okay, this is carbon number one. Okay, and here we will have carbon number six. So one four means, okay, when I draw another one over there, right, this is carbon number one, two, three, 
and 4. Okay, so this glycosidic bond then can be made between carbon number 1 and carbon number 4. Or if I would draw another one here, this glycosidic bond could be then made between carbon number 1 and carbon number 6. Okay, so that's the linkage. It's of course a polysaccharide, so it's a polymer made of many alpha glucoses. It's found in the animals and bacteria, but never in plants. It's similar structure to starch, but there will be differences. And it's the major carbohydrate storage uh, product of animals stored in small granules, which we can find in mussel or liver. So again, here relationship and the structure. So it's on, it's insoluble. So again, it doesn't affect water potential. So no osmosis. It's insoluble. So it doesn't diffuse out of the cell. Compact. So can be stored in small spaces, and it's highly branched. Okay, more highly branched. So again, can be used by enzymes. Okay. Fast for the breakdown. And again, the product of this hydrolysis would be glucose, which can be used in respiration. Uh, so in terms of the glycogen, we've got a question here. Describe the structure. And another question suggests how glycogen acts as a source of energy. Okay, do not include transport across membranes in your answer. Each of those are two marks worth. So the first one, structure. So easy stuff. So it's a polysaccharide of alpha glucose joined by glycosidic bond. Okay, easy stuff. So just how will act as a good storage? So then you need to use the notes from our so what approach from before, from the slide before. So it could be hydrolyzed to glucose. Okay, so act as a source of uh, energy for the respiration. Okay, so make sure that this hydrolysis to glucose and used for the respiration it's always in your notes that always gives you easy to max. So the last of the uh, polysaccharides is cellulose and this is where the main difference is coming from it's made of beta glucose. So if you uh, if you remember the, uh, the beta uh, glucose was slightly different to alpha glucose in terms of the position of the um, of the OH group. So it's still a polysaccharide, it's a polymer, but what you always need to remember is shape. It's unbranched, okay? So uh, always will run antiparallel, run parallel, sorry, to another molecule, and the presence of the hydrogen bonds is really important here because it's here to form cross linkages between the chains. So remember, hydrogen bonds coming along, and they are here to strengthen the cellulose. So cellulose then the structure of it, okay, that's what you need to remember. It's grouped together to form microfibers, as you can see here. So this is the cellulose molecule made of beta glucose and it forms microfibers which in turn are arranged in parallel groups called fibers. Okay, it's a major component of the plant cell wall, so provide rigid, that's always the mark on the mark schemes. The cellulose cell wall prevents the cell from bursting so that's another information so will help with the pressure and the living plant cells uh, are turgid and push against one another to so provide the maximum surface area for the photosynthesis for the absorption of the sun uh, light energy so relationship to the structure okay again same approach with so what but here we will be talking about straight molecules because of the presence of beta glucose joined by those hydrogen bonds to form microfibers so provides straight okay strength okay so that's your model answer for the structure and function of cellulose so uh, we've got one more question here describe the differences between the structure of cellulose and a, a, a glycogen molecule. This is a really good question because they want a difference. Anytime they're asking about difference, they're asking you to compare something. You need to firstly realize what they want from you. So they want only structure, nothing else, just structure. And if you're looking at the differences in one statement, you will talk about cellulose, okay, comma, 
Then you're talking 